Hello, 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 and welcome back to Ladies Night, where you get the woman's insight. Thank you for coming back again to check us out and hear what amazing things we're going to be talking about from a woman's perspective. I am your host, First Lady Tammy. Nice to see everybody here. Make sure if you're watching that you like this video, hit that thumbs up, you subscribe to Knowledge and Relationships, and you definitely share this video. But without further ado, I am joined by my ladies. My ladies are here to join me again. So nice to see everybody. Hope everybody's doing good on this nice Saturday. Well, nice Saturday, depending on where you live. So, you know, your weather, weather might not be as great as mine, but uh, hopefully your weather is just as nice, if not better. So, um, so nice to see you guys. We have another amazing topic we're going to discuss today. This one's going to be a good one, as they always are. So our topic tonight, we're going to bring up the name of our topic. So our topic is, is there a right way to grieve? So this is going to be a very interesting one. We have some really great questions that we're going to be discussing and we also have a video that hopefully we'll be able to show um, at some point during this, but um, hopefully very soon. So, um, so yeah, so this one's going to be a really, really good one. We're going to um, go ahead and get started with the question. As soon as the video is available, then we'll pop that right up so we can look at that, kind of react to that, and then we'll go ahead and keep going. So without further ado, we're, let's get right to our questions. We're gonna start with question number one. Question, and I didn't even get to wiggle my fingers. I'm so sad. I like wiggling my fingers to show my magic. Um, all righty, so our first question is, do you believe that there is a certain way that people should grieve? That's our first question. Do you believe there's a certain way that people should grieve? So we're gonna start with Luann, then we'll go to Queen, Mrs. M3, and then Chris. So Luann, what is your response to the first question? Um, uh, sorry, I was typing. Um, no, I I don't. I I believe that um, there are different meanings and different ways that people um, can grieve. Um, so not, I know traditionally people want to hide in their room and cry and not eat or eat their selves to a, a, a to a oblivion, if that's, if that's how you say it. But, um, I think that, um, you grieve according to how you are feeling and it may be about the person who you are grieving about. So I think all that comes into play. Okay, thank you, Luann. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we're going to go on to Queen. What are your thoughts, Queen? Um, I used to think that, you know, there was a certain way you, you grieve because that's all I saw. But as I got older, I realized that, you know, just because someone doesn't show emotions or, you know, they're able to keep going in life, that, that doesn't mean that they're not grieving. So, yeah, I don't think that there's a traditional way. I think my my eyes was opened up to other ways to grieve. So, yeah, no. Thank you, Queen. Thank you for your input. All right, and Mrs. M3, what is your response to that first question? Um, we can't hear you, Mrs. M3. Hopefully it's good. Hi, everybody. Go. Uh, is there a right, right way to grieve? Um, uh, there isn't. Uh, we know there are stages of grief, but everyone goes through their stages differently. Um, I remember growing up with uh, in a Pentecostal church, and basically a funeral was a time for the minister to have hundred new faces and it was just church service with a dead body in front of pretty much the pulpit. Like there was still singing, there was still shouting, there was a choir. You still eat afterwards just like on Sunday. Um, they would call it a home going. If people felt the spirit they would shout. Um, I didn't think it was unusual until I came to other service in a different um, congregation and then they were like why are people rejoicing and I'm like because the person is going to heaven and they're like how do they know that and I'm like I don't know how to know it, but that's all I ever knew growing up and so um yeah I can't you can't I, I can't judge someone on how they mourn or grieve but I do know that psychologically speaking, there are stages of grief and everyone goes to their different cycles differently. Yeah. Thank you, Mrs. M3. All righty, we are over to Chris. What are your thoughts? Um, I would like to think no, but I don't think that people should go to drugs or I would hope that they, I know a lot of people when they, when they lose somebody, they tend to want to go themselves. They feel like they can't live on. And so I think most people, if they can, if they have access, they should go to therapy or seek some type of like grief services. Um, I know my, my best friend passed away when I was in high school and my school, they had something for us, like a, I forgot what they call it, but it was just somewhere we, we can all go to get help if we needed it. Um, just to kind of help um, understand like how we were feeling and all of that. And so I think people should reach out if they can, especially if they have a history of addiction, um, a history of chronic depression, anxiety. Um, I do think they should have some type of plan in place just in case, you know, worst case scenario does happen. But as far as whether or not you want to celebrate the life, I think that's completely up to the person. I wouldn't tell them how to get through each stage of grief, but I think a good place to start would be therapy, especially if they have any past issues. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Um, yeah, no, I um, I agree with, with a lot of what has been said. Um, I kind of think that um, when it comes to grieving, some people can look at it like there's only one way that you should be sad. Just like when people are depressed, people may think, you know, that when they see someone, they can tell they're depressed. But a lot of people hide their depression and they don't let people know that they're depressed. So I think when it comes to grieving, you know, you have to do it the way that you feel you want to or need to. Um, and everybody handles emotions differently. So you can't tell somebody how to handle their emotions. Just like we shouldn't, shouldn't have to tell somebody how they should grieve. So um, I definitely don't think, you know, you can really judge somebody on what they're doing, especially if you don't know what they've been through and what that relationship is. And, um, you know, and then you don't even know if the person knew they were going to pass. And they said, you know, when I pass away, I don't want you crying for me. So that could be another reason if somebody chooses to celebrate that could be the reason why, because that specific person requested that you not cry. They'd rather you celebrate. So, um, so yeah, it's interesting because a friend of mine on Facebook, her husband just passed away. I think it was last week, or I should say, I'd say this week, because she just 
posted on Facebook, she said she wants to go with him because she's having a hard time handling it. So, um, so yeah, it's hard. Um, you know, if you've never had to grieve, that's amazing. But if you have and you chose to do it your way, you know, that nobody can say anything about the way you chose to do it. So, um, all righty, all righty, all righty. Nice, nice, nice. Thanks, guys. Okay, we're going to go into our next question. That was a lot of nice information. Everybody has some really great responses. We're going to move on to question number two. If I can wiggle my fingers, hopefully the question pops up that I'm not wiggling my fingers just because it looks like something fun to do. So if the question pop up at any time, question number two. If it would come through. Okay, oh, there we go. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So I was hoping I was gonna be doing that for like way too long, but nice. See, my, my fingers work. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer. Um, all right, so our next question. It says, some cultures believe that when you pass on, it's a celebration and you should celebrate the life instead of mourning. Would you agree? So once again, some cultures believe that when you pass, it's a celebration, you should celebrate instead of mourning. What do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? And go ahead and expand on whether you agree or disagree. So for this question, we're going to start with Queen, go to Luann, go to Chris, and then go to Mrs. M3. All righty, Queen, what is your response to the second question? Do you agree, disagree, and then just expand on that? <clears throat> um, I, I mean, I, I agree. I mean, I can't tell a another culture what to do. Um, <laughs> but um, <clears throat> I think um, sometimes it's hard to, for a person to, depending, depending it's, it's hard for people to celebrate because all they can know, all they feel is the void, that mm -hmm. the emptiness that that person is gone. You know, so I, I agree with what Chris was saying about, you know, not running to other things to code it or to hide it. But, you know, yeah, I think I think. Um, I think it's hard because, you know, it's, it's kind of like that saying, like, you know, you're going to miss me when I'm gone. <laughs> so I always feel like we should always celebrate a person when they're here because we never know when we're going to lose them. So, yeah. So I, yeah, I know for me, like when my mom died, it was, it was very hard, uh, very hard. And it took, it took almost 20 years for me to, um, not, not cry on mother's day or her birthday. I mean, I still miss her, but it took like literally almost 20 years. So, yeah. So I think celebration is good, but it depends on what you need to do to get through the moment. Oh, you're on mute. I knew that. <laughs> I'm sitting there just talking, talking, talking. Um, yeah, I, don't, I typically if somebody's talking, I, I turn mine off because I don't want any background noise to interrupt what they're saying. Um, okay, so like I was saying, thank you, Queen, for your response to the question. Um, before we get to Luke, and I just want to read this comment. We want to shout out WT Funk is this. He's tuning in. Thank you for tuning in once again to Ladies Night. And WT Funk says, absolutely, most funerals are fake energy from most in the crowd. New Orleans does it right. Hmm, you know, that's interesting. I've never been to New Orleans, but I'd love to see how they do it. I've heard great things about New Orleans. Great things. So, yeah. So, but thank you for tuning in. We always love it when you uh, tune in and give a comment or two or three. So, thank you, thank you, thank you. All righty, Lou Ann, what is your response to the second question? Um, I, I, I agree because I have some family members who are... Um, actually um puerto rican and mexican so um what they do a whole celebration i know it's like um they go all out for um the people that um have gone on you know and to try to keep their um their memory or their spirit alive 
um, it's something as like, you know, the, um, the day of the dead. I know that's like to us is Halloween, but to them it's a celebrating all their ancestors and all their, their past people who have, um, gone. Um, I think that's what it is. I think so. <laughs> yeah, Dia, Dia the day after, Marcos. yeah. November um, 1st. November 1st, yeah. Yeah, and so, um, but that's their time that they do celebrate um, their past ancestors and their past um, um, relatives that have gone on. And so that's a big celebration for them. So, um, um, and, they, and they really get themselves made up, you know, and mask and all kind of things. And they actually have a parade. So, um, I think that um, what the young lady said in the in the in the comments that yeah, some funerals are very very fake, and they're so dead, which makes them sad. No pun intended. Well, <laughs> thank you, Lauren. I keep forgetting to unmute myself. I need to remember to do that. Um, thank you, Lauren, for that uh, for your feedback to that question. Uh, we are going to go on to, I think I said Chris and then Mrs. M3. Chris, it is your turn. What would you say in response to question number two? Uh, before, I want, before I go, um, Dia de los Muertos is a very interesting holiday, and I'm glad Luan brought it up. Um, they actually, they put up um, like a tribute to their families, like a, I don't, like a, I don't know what you would call it, but it's basically like they put up their picture and then they put flowers around it and foods. And it's basically inviting the spirit to come back on that day to visit the family. Um, it's a very sweet holiday. Um, but as far as this question, I don't quite agree. So I think if that, if that, if that's what makes sense to you, do that. Um, I think this is easier for, let's say you lose like a grandparent or like you, you kind of, um, you kind of know the person's going to go. It's a, you can kind of celebrate their life after they go. But if it's more tragic, if you lose somebody unexpectedly, um, I think it's really hard to celebrate. Like even when you try to, you feel guilty. Um, and so I think this one definitely depends on the situation, um, how you lost the person. But I think you can try and celebrate certain lives, especially if the person wanted you to. Um, and they ask you to like, don't, you know, don't sit around and cry for me. I want you to be happy. Like I lived an amazing life. And they give you that, that confirmation that they're ready to go. I, it's a lot easier, but if it's unexpected, I, I think it's extremely hard to celebrate. It takes a long time. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much. And last, well, not really lastly, because I'm usually, I make myself go last. But this is in three. What is your response to the second question? Um, Lord have mercy. My family has experienced five deaths, seven deaths, six in the last five years, since 2017, started with my sister. When my siblings started dying, that was the hardest. And my brother right next to me, we're 14 years apart, but he was the only one in the house still, everyone else growing and having it on the group um, when I was born, up until I was four. He lived with us, he moved out to my sister's house when we were 18. He passed away in 2018 and that one even my parents passed away 2008 2011 those were difficult but i grieved my grandmother when my parents died it was the weirdest thing i went to i got i sat down with a therapist talked with them and they were asking question after question of my parents they asked me one question of my grandmother and i was just like bawling crying all the way to my car from the session um and then my my brother passing away i didn't even want to go to the funeral i was I was in denial. My first response was, no, he's not gone. Like, and he, you know, don't, his, the family, his kids and, and um, fiance at the time um, donated, you know, his body to science. So, you know, there are people walking around this day, you know, with my brother, five people with his, his parts, you know, and still alive because of my brother um, and his son, son dying, but we were not ready for that. Like the older people, okay, we're ready. My, my sister, older than the both of us, you know, she was in the hospital for a year. So we were kind of preparing one way or the other. She's either going to come out of pay or, or, you know, something's going to happen and she'll, she'll pass. But we had a year to prepare for that. My brother was five days and we were just, I was just on the phone with him that Monday. 
I was just talking to him. He was telling me, you know, get in touch with your with our sister, um, talk to her. And she wound up passing away in 2020. And then our nephew um, in 2020 as well. Um, it was not easy uh, for me to tell anybody, you know, how to grieve or how to mourn or, or that their celebration of life is, is wrong. I can't. But I can tell you, for me, my well-being, my heart, going back to the particular, um, you know, uh, fellowship, of course, where we grew up, I wasn't ready to celebrate him being gone because he wasn't gone to me. He wasn't gone. Like, no, like I want my brother back. He's gone. I want him back. I just talked to him on Monday and he's gone on Saturday. Like, and that's all. My mother passed away. The anniversary of her passing was this past week. And then my brother passing is at the end of this month. So, um, yeah, those were those were hard times. So I can't tell anybody how to how to do it. But I know for me, I was not in that space to celebrate anything about my brother being gone from, from us, the relationship. And all that. So, yeah. Thank you, Mrs. M3. Thank you. Um, before I give my feedback, I just want to read the comments. Um, WT Funk is this. Um, had um, had stated about the movie Coco. So it says, ooh, Lord, Coco Pixar movie speaks on Day of the Dead, if you're curious. That's an awesome movie. If anybody's never seen it, definitely a movie you should watch. It definitely does talk about Day of the Dead. It's 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 a super cute movie. I watched it. My daughter and I have watched it a million times. So yeah, that's a good one if you are curious about it. Um, also says, great point, Chris. And if they are, um, unexpected deaths. It would feel super hard to celebrate or in case of murders. Um, yeah, I definitely think that it, like, you know, Chris said, like, if it's unexpected all of a sudden, that's something that's harder because you don't have time. You didn't prepare for it. You didn't know it was coming. So, it, so yeah, that I could see that being harder than if you knew the person was going and it was just a matter of time and you could mentally prepare for it. But if it's all of a sudden, you know, that's just, yeah. I mean, I, that that happened as far as um, a little boy that I knew that passed away. That was, he, he passed away at three years old. And um, yeah, that, yeah, it was, I had a hard time with that because the day after I had to go to work and every time somebody asked me how I was doing, I would start crying. Um, Cause I worked at a free school with kids that were his same age. So I had a really, really super hard time with that. But, um, but in response to the question, um, you know, Cultures do things differently um, and each culture is different. So you can't necessarily say what's right for a culture to do because there's always gonna be something in one culture that you may or may not agree with, but that's what that culture chooses to do. So you can't really judge a culture for what they choose to do as far as it, it being more of a celebration of life than a mourning. Um, I mean, I know I've when I first saw like people you know, celebrating, I thought it was just kind of odd because I was just so used to people mourning and being sad, but, you know, you have to understand why people are choosing to do that. So I think when it, when it comes to people not understanding things, it's because um, when, when it comes to people not really agreeing with something, it could be that they don't really understand it. So if they took the time to really understand it, then they might actually see the point of view of people and where they're coming from. So um, I definitely think, um, that you know if that's what your culture chooses to do then hey that's fine and if you that's not what you choose to do that's fine too and like we already said you can't really judge somebody or a culture on what their choices are i mean everybody is entitled to do whatever it is that they feel they need to do in that situation and i think it's it's easier to say what you wouldn't do when you are not used to doing it or when you don't understand it so um, so yeah, if you haven't been in that situation, it's hard to say what you wouldn't wouldn't do, what you wouldn't wouldn't do. Um, but um, WT Funk is this also says, I always love the way Vikings and natives celebrate as well. It's a mushroom celebration. Um, I'd like the more uh, information on that because I've never heard of a mushroom celebration. So if you could elaborate on that, um, that would be really really nice because I've never ever heard of a mushroom celebration. Um, and I heard, I seen a couple of the ladies shaking their heads, so I'm sure that they have no idea what that is either. Um, but yeah, so there's some things nope. that, you know, that we like and some things that, you know, we may not like, but it could be a matter of we don't necessarily understand it. So, um, so yeah, so WT Funk, if you could elaborate on what that is, 
that'd be really helpful for us to understand what exactly a mushroom celebration is because I'm not really sure. So, um, alrighty. So, uh, oh, he says, get stoned. <laughs> so, uh, Knowledge Relationships is tuning in and said that means getting stoned. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. I get it now. Uh-huh. Wait, I missed it. It's, it's what? Yeah. It means to, it means to get stoned. So ego death. Oh, Wait, okay. ego death not true. Stoned. It's uh, psychedelics. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Very very interesting. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Alrighty, we're gonna get to our number three question. Um, wiggling the fingers and hoping. To, dang. Okay. Could you give me a second to finish what I was gonna say? I was gonna say wiggling questions for question number three. Let me see. And then it popped up, but okay. All righty, we're gonna get to question number three. It says, people associate grieving with death. Do you think that you can only grieve about death or are there other things that you can grieve about? So question says, is grief just related to death or can you associate it with other? Um, so we're gonna start with, we're gonna start with Chris, Luann, Queen, and then Mrs. M3. All righty. So, Chris, what are your thoughts? I'm not too sure. I've, when I've given things away, I've had to, I had to kind of detach myself, but typically it was because that thing was attached to somebody else that I lost. Like uh, my grandma, she had this I Love Lucy mug. And I got, I was really sick one weekend. I was in college. And I was holding on to my refrigerator and then something happened and I dropped the mug. And I think I like coughed or something, I don't know, something weird happened. And I remember just crying and it took me like three weeks to get over dropping this mug, but it wasn't the mug that I missed. It was just the fact that it was her mug that I missed. And so typically when it comes to me like giving away clothes or items that I was given, even if the person actually didn't pass, if they gave it to me and, it, and that person means something to me and I can't find it or I have to give it away or whatever it may be, um, I find myself kind of having to go through a process of detaching from that particular item. Hmm. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Um, Lou M, what is your response to question number three? Yeah. Um, I do think you can grieve um, more than just death. Um, um, Uh, um, sorry, my, my thoughts are not coming all the way together. Um, I think that there's a lot, um, that you can, um, well, not a whole lot, but besides death, I, I do think you can, you can mourn, you know, you know, probably like Chris said, losing, losing something really special to you, you know, um. Maybe it's not um, a human person, but it's your your dog, or you know, you just lost um, your your job. I mean, you know, you do get emotional. Uh, I don't know if that's part of grief if you lose your job, but it could, you know, possibly end up where you are so angry and so mad that it sink you into a, a depression. So, uh, but yeah, to that question, I do think there is more than one way um, to grieve and uh, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be about death. Thank you, Lou Ann. Thank you very, very much. Um, all righty, so WT Funk is this, says grief of losing of half your shit. I agree. Many men break down in tears from divorce or baby mama drama. Yeah, that's a big one, baby mama drama. We'll have you in tears and tears and tears. Shoot, baby daddy drama for some some women will have you in tears too. So, so yeah, I definitely can agree with that. Um, all righty. Uh, and then he says, grief of kids turning out stupid after spending money on college and they turn insane. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. You got a lot of right. thoughts there. Right. Thoughts you Losing got your there. job and going to the job and shooting up the place. Like, I mean, come on. Um, okay, so who did I say was next? Was it 
Queen, okay, thank you. Queen, what are your thoughts about question number three? Do you think that grieving is just for death or do you think you can grieve other things? No, I think, I mean, you can grieve anything. I mean, some people are hypersensitive, so they grieve a lot, you know, because they feel like they are losing something and suffering. Um, yeah, I just think um, it's, I just think you can grieve anything, but it's just uh, how long, you know what I mean? Depends on what it is, you know? For instance, you know, like <clears throat> I had a, I, like Chris said, I had a blanket that someone had uh, knitted for my mother and she slept with it until she died and they gave it to me because I was the one who lived the furthest away. Like I wasn't there when she died. Um, so every night I would sleep with it and my roommate, I thought, <laughs> I thought she threw it away and I was going to kill her, <laughs> but she actually just took it to the cleaners for me and got it. It was like a little hole in it. So she got it stitched up for me. So, um, but yeah, so yeah, I just think you, you know, you, you grieve the loss of different things because of different reasons, you know, like I was really sad. I remember one time I had this really cool, it was my first kind of like social work job. And, you know, I, I had a really horrible boss and I got, I got let go. And I remember crying. Right. And then I was in the meeting with her. And then I said, all of a sudden I, I just cried. And she was like, are you okay? And I said, yeah. Like I felt sad, but then I felt this overwhelming of like joy. And I said, thank you. Cause you actually freed me. And then I said, you know, I went back to Amistad. I said, I am free now, master. <laughs> and I walked out. <laughs> but it was so, it was so freeing. Like even when I was talking about, it, I was like, yeah, I lost my job and all. And I was like, but I feel so good. Everyone was like, are you okay? I was like, yeah. I just felt like liberated. I don't know. But anyway. Thank you, Queen. Thank you very much for that. Um, WT Funk is this, says, grief of getting, of getting, hitting my little toe on the corner table. R.I.P. my little toe. Yeah, that's a, that's a hard one. I, I've experienced that a few times. Yeah, definitely a, Definitely something worth crying over, grieving. Or, you know, when you hit your elbow, your funny bone. Yeah, so even though my elbow isn't gone, that's some pain. Like, you know, you just never know. You never know whether to laugh or to cry when it comes to that. So, um, but next we have Mrs. M3. What are your thoughts on that question as far as is grieving just for death or can you do it for other things? Absolutely. Grief is about loss. And so anything that you lose, that you valued, that you prized is a loss. And um, you're going to you're gonna miss it. Like putting water in a bucket and swirling your hand around, 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 around. It makes a whirlpool. You take your fist out. There's a hole for a minute. And then it fills back in. And that filling back in, that's the hope. That's stage eight, right? That's the hope that comes and that freedom um, that Queen was talking about. The hope and you're looking forward to the future. What's next? Yeah. Any kind of Thank you, um, Mrs. M3. So I actually was going to say what you just said, that um, for me, I don't associate grief with death because grief is about loss. So anytime something is lost, you would grieve it, whether it's somebody who passes away, whether it's you lost a job, whether it's, you know, um, your pet passes away, whether um, you know, you um, didn't pass a test because I've, gr I've I've grieved over that. The fact that I didn't pass the test and I was super close to uh, passing that test and I didn't. Um, I grieved that. So um, there's different things that you can grieve about. But once again, it's something where if somebody can't tell you how to grieve or what to grieve about. So it's it's whatever you feel. So and so by some by certain things it's almost like saying you know is it okay to say to somebody that that's not okay well you can't judge what they're doing because you don't know what they've been through you don't know what that person that death that whatever they lost meant to them and so it might not mean anything to you but it might mean a lot to them so you know people grieve differently 
they grieve for different reasons. And so we have to give people the chance to do that in their own way. So, and just because the way they do it is not the way we would do it, doesn't mean that it's, no, it's not done in the right way. So, um, so yeah. So anyway, um, thank you for that. Thank you for that. Nice questions, you guys. And we got nice comments coming in from WT Funk has a lot of good things to say. So we're gonna move right on, move right on to question number four. Question number, okay, so do we just not like me wiggling my fingers? Is that what's going on? Cause I like the wiggling that helps me prove that I got magic in my fingertips, but apparently we just popping them up. So I guess that's what we gonna do. Um, and yes, and now WT Funk says Atlanta Falcons 28 to three, that made the entire state cry during the Super Bowl choke. Well, you know, hey, you know, not all teams are going to win the Super Bowl. That's all, That's what I'll say to that. And and they not my team, so, you know, I wasn't really crying. But I'm sure, you know, that that state felt kind of bad about it. Um, but question number four, question number four, we're going to get to question number four. That did pop up and then it disappeared. There it goes. So it says, do you believe that grief is only a sad emotion? Do you think that grief is only a sad emotion? So this time we're going to start with Mrs. M3. We're going to go to Chris, then Luann, then Queen. All righty, Mrs. M3, what do you think? Do you think that grief is only a sad emotion? Uh, no. Um, I do believe that there, when we are sad, sometimes, like uh, Chris was saying, we can um, disassociate the pain. Like I cried over house shoes. Um, um, it, it disassociates, but, um, here's the thing. Stage two of grief is emotional release. That can look like crying. That can look like hysterical laughter. That can look like any kind of way that a person expresses their emotion. So, um, your emotional release depends on your personality and, and how you, um, choose to express it. So, yeah. Thank you, Mrs. M3. Um, all righty. So real quick, before we get to Chris, uh, we have the link if you want to join the panel down there. So if you'd like to join the panel, you can just click the link and you will be up on here with us so we can see you and hear you and get all your comments live and live. So hopefully, you know, if you want to join, please feel free. All righty. Next, we have Chris. What do you think? Do you think that it grief is just a if it, it is a sad emotion. Do you think it's a sad emotion? Uh, I don't think it is in everybody. In me, yes. Like I can't think of like I hate grieving. I think it's the worst thing. I think it's one of the worst. It's, I can't even describe it as just sadness. I feel like it's a bunch of different emotions all combined. Um, but very rarely is it something positive. Um, like I said, the celebration takes a while to come. Um, for me. Uh, so when I think of grief, I don't think about anything positive for me as either. It's probably more so just a sad, very sad emotion. All right. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very, very much. All righty. When next is up is Lou Ann. What do you think? Do you think that grief is only a sad emotion? Um, from, um, um, I want to say um, what um, the lady from The View said. I know we haven't gotten to the video yet. It'll probably be redundant at this point. But um, what she said in um, what she said in um, the video clip was that uh, um, some uh, different emotion, like gr grief, like for her, it was is not um, a, a very sad emotion. It's actually it's just like a, a regular emotion, you know, um, grief sad and depression were kind of linked to one, um, even though they're all different, but they all have the same um, quality, which is sadness. Um, um, sometimes uh, grief, like the rest of you ladies have said, um, it comes with that notion of, yeah, I'm, I'm sad. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm ups not upset, but I'm, I'm feeling, um, I'm feel it's like a displacement that you, that you will be feeling at that moment. And um, and you're trying to try to come out of that. So um, just like when you're sad or if you're happy or if you're joyous, um, 
you're going to feel those, you're going to feel that emotion. So I feel like grief for me is, uh, is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, I think that you can, um, kind of cope with it. Um, um, I don't necessarily think it's sad or if it's happy. I just think it's like a neutral feeling, if that makes any sense. Um, thank you very Oh, Okay, thank you very much, Thuan. Thank you very much for your um, your feedback. Um, all righty, we're going to keep it going. Um, after um, Queen um, gives her response, then we're going to try to go ahead and play the video, and then we can react to the video before we get to the number five question. Um, all righty, right. Queen, what, what are your thoughts? Do you think that uh, grief is only a sad emotion? Um, <clears throat> for me, yes. <laughs> It was not just sad. It was almost uh, debilitating because my my losses were extremely difficult. Uh, my mom was, I had lost um, three people every two weeks. So I lost... Um, I lost a, uh, an uncle. I Two weeks later, my best friend's mother died that I grew up next door to. And two weeks later, my mom died. So there was no room to function. It was just, it went, I went numb, like almost like I was walking around in a coma. But I functioned. I gave to everyone, I helped my family, but then it became, I disappeared. Like, <laughs> it was like, you know, you got, you know, queen, you got to get home to the funeral. And I'm like, I wouldn't answer the phone. I wouldn't, you know, I just disappeared to the point where they had to send out scouts to find me <laughs> to even talk about it or deal with it. So no, um, for me, I wish it was something different. I wish it didn't, I mean, it It was, it's one of the worst feelings I have ever experienced in my life. And I don't ever want to experience that again. I know I am probably, you know, but it was, my mom was the worst one. I mean, I've lost people after her, but it was, it's, it was crazy. It was like, yeah, I, I can't even explain it. It was it was painful almost to the point where I felt like I had to take medication because my body was hurting, like, and there was no reason for it other than me mourning, which is crazy to me. So, yeah. Mm -mm. Now, nah, that was some serious pain. <laughs> oh, thank you for sharing that, Queen. Thank you very much. Um, all righty, so we're going to go ahead and get the video up. We got our people working behind the scenes, and we're going to play the video, and then we're going to react to the video. So if you go ahead. I'm going to mute mine. If everybody could mute their uh, themselves, and we'll go ahead and play the video. A TikTok video has gone viral of sisters performing a dance at their mom's funeral. And it was met with, yeah, well, but hold on. It was mixed, it was met with mixed reviews. They said they wanted to celebrate their mom with a few laughs before slipping into a depression. But some people said it was inappropriate. How can you tell somebody what's appropriate for them? Let me shut up. All righty. Okay, so we're gonna go around um, and have everybody react to that video. And after that, then I'll give my response to that number four question. Um, but we're going to start. Um, oh, we got a question. P Funk says, but we'll go ahead and read that question in a little bit. Um, but we're gonna start with Luann, then Chris, then Mrs. M3, and then Queen. All right. So Luann, what is your re how? What do you think about that video? Um, well, I actually watched the whole clip, um, and, um, the ladies on there were, um, kind of funny, except for one of the ladies, Sunny. And I, I liked, the reason why I liked it is because, um, it showed a different side of people trying to mourn, even someone as dear as like their mother. 
Um, and um, I liked what um, some of the ladies were saying is that you can't, sometimes people have to grieve or mourn in their own way and you have to give them, you have to give them time. Um, my birth mother passed away um, of breast cancer. I was telling um, Hall of Fame this and uh, Miss Queen. Um, when she passed away, it, um, I, I felt a little sad, but I couldn't cry, if that makes any sense. I, I couldn't, for some reason, my, the inside of me, I could not have that type of emotion. I was sad that she was gone, but I was kind of rejoiced because she was in so much pain. And um, so for me, it, 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 it was a little different. So I, I at her funeral, we didn't have um, her there, which sparked outrage because my brother, on the other hand, thought she should be there. And he threw a complete fit and he was very, very like emotional, very emotional. He felt like it didn't matter if she was cremated. She should be. She should have been there, and we shouldn't have been laughing. We shouldn't have been rejoicing. We all should have been crying. We all should have been uh, weeping and at our feet. And we were looking at him like, "Why?" You know. And so um, the video kind of touched me because I, I didn't want to. I felt like was I the only one not that don't have you know that wouldn't have an emotion to even their own mother passing was I weird? Was that strange that I couldn't even cry, even if I tried? Oh, thank you, Luann. Thank you for that. Um, yes, thank you. Thank you very much for sharing that. Um, Chris, what do you think of the video the fact that we were able to watch? What do you think? I feel, I'm assuming, well, I don't want to make an assumption, but it could be that they knew that this day was coming. And so this is what they did with their mom that they kind of wanted to do after she passed to, to remember her. Um, I, I thought it was pretty sweet. Um, I wish I knew the story behind behind the dance. Um, we did this for my grandma all the time. My grandma, she loved uh, reggae temptations and so in Michael Jackson. And so on her birthday, we, we play her favorite songs and we dance. And even right after she passed, I think we had or right after the funeral, we had like a celebration for her. And so um, I think a lot of people, one thing about grieving, especially in groups like that, I think when you look it over, it creates some anxiety for you when you feel as though you're not doing it properly. Um, like Luann said, that her, her brother was upset um, and she felt like she was weird for, for not crying. Um, we have this uh, image of what grieving should look like, look like and what it should be for everybody. And I think that's why therapy is really important. So people can, they can kind of reassure you that it's it's okay. You know, the way you grieve is the way you grieve. Um, but yeah, I, I thought the dance was lovely. <laughs> awesome, thank you, Chris. Um, all righty, um, Mrs. M3 and then Queen, and then I'll read the comment that WT Funk Posted. I thought it was very interesting what he said. Um, go ahead, um, Mrs. M3. Um, yeah, so the same. I would want to see, like, what, what's the backstory? That could have been something that she taught them how to do, and that was their tribute to her. Um, and it was nice for the family to allow them to express themselves that way. Um, I do uh, want to just say, I think as we're talking about everyone grieves differently to give give us that space to understand like our audience ourselves to understand that the grieving process is healthy and even if it takes us to the depth of oh my gosh life is over for that particular moment you know our everyday grief can turn into clinical depression absolutely that it's it's a thin line between and you know the stages of of, of grief being you know this the third stage being anger in the fourth stage, remorse, and then you try to bargain. All those things happen in the grieving process, but it's all healthy. And it's not, there's no wrong way to do it. And there's not, there's not one particular stage that you start at first. Um, you know, a lot of people can start with denial, like, no way, I was just like me with my brother, um, with my mother. It was like, you know, 
this sense of you know relief and, and she's not in pain anymore. That was eleven years of her, you know, struggling with her illness. My brothers, he kept to himself his illness, and we didn't know until all of a sudden, you know. Um, and so that's why you know it took us by surprise. So those are things that when we when we look at how a person mourns, we can't we can't judge them. I mean, I'm glad their parents or their their family members allow them to do that. Thank you, Mrs. M3. All righty, Queen, what are your thoughts on the video, the, the part that we were able to see anyway? Um, I thought it was cool. I think um, <clears throat> they look kind of young, so it was something that they had to do for themselves. They probably talked about it, you know, um, during the process of the funeral, but, you know, I think... Um, You know, every everyone everyone deals with loss or different. So, you know, I don't think there's a right or wrong way. I think just people just always have to have something to say. You know, I you know I know for me, um, I had a I had someone tell me because I was living in California when my mom passed and. There was another friend of mine who lost her mom to cancer as well. And, um, but she lived with her and she was like, you know, everyone was like, oh, you know, so-and-so can relate to you. And she, she had to stop them. She was like, no, I can't relate to, to, to Queen. And she was like, why, why are you, why are you saying you can't relate? You both lost your mom. She was like, I live with my mom. Queen lived 3000 miles away from her mom very different. I wasn't as close to my mom as Queen was to her mom. So, you know, even in the similarities, it's very different. So, you know, I think the bond that they had with their mom, it showed through them being able to celebrate and um, laugh. Not, It's not that the tears aren't there. It's just that the tears aren't there now. So, <clears throat> yeah, that's what I think. Thank you, Queen. Um, all right, so as far as the video, um, I mean, I didn't say anything wrong with what they were doing. You know, we've already talked and said that, you know, everybody grieves in their own way. So that could be the way they were choosing to grieve was to remember the good times. And that actually made them laugh and made them happy rather than, and even uh, I think Whoopi said that they were choosing to celebrate before they went through this whole morning thing. Um, and then that's, that's what they chose to do. Um, and maybe that was a healthy thing that they chose to do for themselves. Um, but, you know, like, you know, a couple of people said, we don't really know the backstory as far as why they chose to do that. But in reality, we don't necessarily need to know the backstory because that was what they chose to do. So um, we can't necessarily judge and say what they did was right or wrong. Um, it was their choice. So, um, you know, you can't necessarily judge somebody over what they choose to do. That's their choice, not yours. And you may do something differently. And does not mean what they chose to do in this case was right or wrong? It was just their choice. So, um, so yeah, Double T Funk had an interesting comment um, that he had said. I don't, I don't, I'm not familiar with who he is. So I don't know if it's a guy or a girl, but um, says, um, so not this one. There was another one that said how you start programs to convince black mother. Okay, so it said, it says this, that is all for clout of matrix. That is not about mourning, but it's for attention from, from the internet. We all mourn in certain ways, but till TikTok exposed teens not serious on elders' deathbed, it was sad. Um, it's very interesting because that's the thing is like, once again, we don't know the backstory. So it is a possibility that that is the case. You know, if they weren't really close to that person and then they just went to the funeral just because, you know, maybe they were a relative. Um, it is a possibility that's what they were doing it for. And if that is the case, that is really sad. But once again, because we don't know the backstory, we don't know if that is the case. And it could be a matter of either A, it is what you said, or it could be that that's really just how they were choosing to mourn um, because maybe they didn't want to cry. Maybe they wanted to laugh and be happy. So, um, so yeah, so that one's interesting because if you know a little bit more of the backstory, it might be a little bit better. Because I did say just earlier to... that um, it could be that um, that maybe, you know, they knew their mom was passing and she said, you know, I don't want you to cry. I want you to celebrate my life. So that could be what they were choosing to do. So, 
Um, very, very interesting. Uh, but thank you for the comments on WT Funk. We definitely appreciate those. Um, in response to that last there, question, as far as, I'm sorry, were you going to say, Luann? Yeah, there is actually a backstory um, when we get off the line, if y'all want to go look at it. I actually read some of the comments, and there was somebody who actually knows the family, the two girls. And that is exactly, that's a, the, the mom was a really funny person. And that's exactly what she wanted. She didn't want anyone to be sad. Actually, the people in the funeral were already dressed um, kind of different. They wasn't. They weren't even dressed in um, traditional black clothes for their funeral. Just so y'all know. There you go. There's the answer to that. So they were doing what their mom would have wanted. So and, everybody and agrees differently. Hmm. So yeah, and I, I don't mean, know if they were necessarily doing it for TikTok. I think no, yeah, it looked like that. someone videotaped them and put it up there because you know, so we don't we don't know why how it went viral. It's just it didn't look like they did it. it looked like somebody in the audience was or someone at the funeral was taping it. Well, you know, I, just, I think it's interesting because I feel like when when something doesn't really make sense to you, you automatically think of it as a bad thing because it doesn't make sense. You automatically associate it with something negative when that's not necessarily what it is. So that's why I feel like people have to take time to really understand things before you speak on it. Just try to understand where the person is coming from and know that just because you feel a certain type of way doesn't mean that's how somebody else feels. Um, but yeah, so um, I always find it interesting when um, so many people think that grief is this, you know, somebody dies and you automatically think of sadness and all these different things. Um, but that's not always the case. But because that's just, I think, the norm for a lot of people, when you see something not done the way that you think it should, you automatically have something negative to say about it because it's not the way that you would do it. Um, so just because it's not the way you would do it doesn't mean that's not the way somebody else would do it. So, um, so yeah. But in response to the last question, as far as grief being a sad emotion, um, I don't necessarily think grief is a, I think it can be a sad emotion. I think grief can be different kinds of emotions for different people. So it might be sadness for one person, but it might be a different, um, different emotion for somebody else. So I think it just kind of depends um, on the person and how they're choosing to grieve. Because for them, grieving may be laughing, may be um, feeling happy about, you know, the person and knowing, you know, they're going to heaven. Um, it could be sadness because you've lost that person. And I think when it is unexpected, I think that the grieving is more sadness than anything else because that was unexpected. It, it was not planned for. Uh, but I think if it's something that you know is coming, then I don't necessarily think that it would always be a sad emotion. So, um, so that one's kind of a, you know, it kind of depends kind of thing, I would say. So, um, but yeah, we are going to go to our number five question. Thank you guys. Nobody else has anything else they want to add to that. Yeah, Here's I do. Oh, I do. go ahead. I, um, I was just, I was just Googling something. Um, and I found this little little quote, if y'all don't mind. No, I, thought it was kinda, I thought it was kind of interesting. No, go ahead. Okay, it says, perhaps the most painful kind of love is called grief, which happens when the object of a person's love is taken away with no hope for return. Grief is love and the confusion by... Call, um, and the confusion caused by not knowing how to love someone who is gone. Grief is love's fu frustration, bitterness, anger, and resentment at destruction. I just thought that was pretty cool. That was a that was a good quote. That was interesting. Um, thank you for reading that. Um, does anybody else have anything they'd like to add before we run to the next question? Yes, no, maybe so, no? Okay, so I'm going to hopefully get a chance to wiggle my fingers. Good. Okay, good, good. He says that from the Lion King. Uh, yeah, I don't think so, WT. No, it's from Google. Oh, so, yeah, it ain't from Lion King. So I don't remember hearing that in the movie at all. So, yeah, but uh, thanks for the question. And he says, love that, he loves that quote. WT Funk loves that quote. All righty, so question number five. Can we see question 
number five. See, yay, it work. I'm happy. I'm sorry, I got something out with this thing. All right, so question number five says, has there ever been a time you found a different way to cope with losing something? Okay, so we're gonna start with Queen. Wait, actually, no, we're gonna start, yeah, we're gonna start with Queen. Then we'll go to Luann, Mrs. M3, and then Chris. All righty, Queen, has there ever been a time you found a different way to cope with losing something? Um, other than how I normally cope with things. <laughs> um, <laughs> Let's see. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I either, I either cry, I either feel a lot about it, or I kind of celebrate it, like I did with the job loss or something like that. Um, I know. Uh, I think the 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 oddest way I've ever coped with loss was. Um, for me, it was odd for me is, um, it had to do again with my mom. And, um, I think it was the first time, uh, me and my sisters and their friends, it was like 18 of us. We went to Bahamas and that was a place my mom, we always went with my mother. Like I, we all had our last trip to the Bahamas with her. Right. So. We, we had the trip and it's like babies. It's, we had a lot of fun. And I think it was like the second day. And then all of a sudden we kind of, when we said goodnight, like we were going to our rooms, me and my sisters just looked at each other. And it's like, we didn't say anything. And uh, we just all met at the beach at like uh, before the sun, for sunrise. We all met at the beach. And we all kind of had on, my mom would always wear these sarongs. So we all had on a sarong bathing suit and we all had, um, sometimes she would have like tea in the morning. Cause it's, you know, it's not that hot depending on the weather, you know, if it's raining, whatever. And we all had tea and we all just sat on the beach. We, we came one by one. We just sat there and we didn't say anything. We waited until the sun came up. We all, it, it was weird. It was very weird. We all got in the got in the water for a little bit, and then we all just left. And uh, like we were all crying, but no one said anything. So it was like it was odd for me. Like that was the oddest way of grieving, is that you know here we are all together. She's not here, and this was her favorite place to be, and this is what she would be doing right now. So yeah, so yeah, that was my oddest way. Non communicate. I'm very. Com I communicate a lot. I talk a lot. I cry a lot. I'm very verbal. So not to be verbal is odd for me. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, Queen. Thank you for that. Um, Wt Funk is this says men grieve cheaper. Y'all had an amazing moment, but men would never think to plan that. But amazing idea. So he likes your idea. Um, a man grieve cheaper. Interesting. Hmm. Um, yeah. Interesting. Wow. What does he mean by that? That doesn't. That, please make it make sense. Because we went. Yes. It's a trip to Bahamas, but you know. <laughs> oh no! I'm talking about when he said men men um, are cheaper or something. Oh, that they probably wouldn't pay a ticket to go away <laughs> and they probably just go to the bar. So I don't know. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Queen. Um, thank you, WT Funk. Thank you for the comments. Um, says men breathe cheaper, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. So, um, all righty. So, Luann, you are up. So in the response to that next question, what do you, has there ever been a time you found a different way to cope with losing something? Of course. Um, smoking. It always gets my mind off of what, uh, and I'm being 100% honest. 
sometimes, you know, having a glass of wine or just um, writing some poetry or just, you know, um, lighting, for me, lighting up herb, smoking, you know, um, kind of clears my mind. It, it helps me um, understand what just happened. And not just that, I, I personally like to cry. So, um, I think it's healthy um, to kind of get that out. Um, so I could just either be, you know, um, taking a bath and, you know, think about, you know, the things that just, that has hurt me or, you know, um, you know, a family, you know, so I kind of, I kind of cope with those things. I kind of cope like that, you know, just by spending time with myself, giving myself affirmations and, you know, but I have a different, because of my, um, my profession, I have a different outlook on um, how to cope with grief and, and, and or just losing someone, period, because um, that, that can happen in a, in a, that can happen for me in a split second um, because of how, of my job. So I think that um, grief for me, it, uh, uh, not grief, but just coping with it for me is um, trying to either be strong or like I said, you know, taking some Mary Jane. Thank you. Thank you, Luann. You know, that that is the way that some people want to cope. And hey, if, that, if that's what you want to do, hey, a good on you. Um, all righty, we want to say shout out to JP, the what is it? JP, the aspiring matriarch, says, good evening, panel and chat. How's your spirit? And JP said that this is the first time catching a live. So we're glad that you were able to catch the live for the first time. And it also says medicating with cannabis. Yes. So searching for peace in myself and others. So, and says, I don't cope. I seek thriving techniques. Okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, thank interesting. you for the comments. Make sure that you hit that like button, subscribe, and feel free to share this video. Um, WT Funk has something else that he has commented. WT Funk says, when it pops back up again, if it pops back up again, maybe it will pop back up again. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Says, type Erica Badu AMV on YouTube to see a Boondocks Grandpa smoking edit with male singer covering song on and on. You will love it, Queen. Hmm. Okay. All righty, Queen. I will check it out. <laughs> okay. She says she'll check that out. All righty. We have Chris. All righty, Chris. Chris, so have you, has there ever been a time that you found a different way to cope with losing something? Yeah, when my, um, my grandma passed away, uh, she gave, she, she had a bunch, she liked to collect um, series, like different TV shows. So she had Friends, Big Bang Theory, Monk, like a bunch of different shows. Um, and my sister got Gilmore Girls and I got Friends and I had never watched it before. And so after she passed, I started watching it. She passed away like maybe a month before I started college. So I took the first two seasons with me to college. Um, and then it also happened to be on Netflix. And so I started watching it. And I was like, oh, I love this show. Like, it's really great. And I remember I got to the last episode. I didn't know it was the last episode. Um, and it ended, you know, on Netflix, if, it's, if the season is over or like the series is over, it's like, what to watch next? And when I saw that pop up, I just, I had like, I just cried. I just cried endlessly. I think almost that entire, I think I was up until like 4 a.m. just crying. And I realized what I was doing. Like I was, co that's how I was coping with it. And ever since then, I, I watch Friends on repeat. Like if I'm doing something, Friends is on the background. Um, and now it just makes me happy. But um, I notice that I typically go to entertainment. So TV, sh like old shows, um, different movies. Like I like TCM, Turner Classic Movies. Um, just to kind of feel like she's not really gone, I think. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, Chris. Um, that's interesting. I, I like that. Um, I like that. Interesting. Thank you for that. Um, all righty, Mrs. M3. Have you ever found a different way to cope with losing something? Um, compared to my normal way, denial and all that. Well, the seventh stage is acceptance, of course, and then there's hope, stage eight. Um, 
it's easier when you know someone is ill and they're going to pass away to be accepting, right? Um, but it doesn't mean that you don't go back to, you know, the bargaining, the remorse, wishing that you could be there, have done something different, whatever, all the all those things. And it can happen 30 years later. My grandma passed when I was in middle school. Well, I was the same week that of my graduation from at that time junior high. Um, my grandmother passed away. And my mom gave me the the choice. Do you want to go back to grandma's funeral? We're gonna send her back home to the Midwest um, so that she can be with our our cousins, our family. Um and I said, no, I want to graduate with my friends. And that was the first time I remember like the the switch where where family and friends for me were separate categories. And I wanted more to be with my friends than to to see my grandmother in a casket. I only wanted to remember my grandmother alive and how she was. And going through therapy, I realized just like with my mom. My grandmother was ill for a long time before she died, and I mourned her as she was living. I missed the relationship I had with her while she was alive, before she was ever gone. And that that part of mourning, like I stuffed it down. Like I was, I was mad at her for being sick, and I was sick. I was I was mad at sickness for existing, and like. The hope in me was like that no one ever gets sick again in my family. And then my mom wound up sick and um, losing her sight by the time I was, I think, 18, something like that. She had a heart surgery when I was 12, like all these different complications. Um, part of the reason that fueled me wanting to be a health educator, right? Um, something in the medical field, um, because I just hate sickness. I hate it. Like, that's my anger. Like, um, I don't like people to be sick. I don't like it when people don't want to hear how to get better. I, I don't like it. And I just try to avoid it. Um, so in everything that I do, I think um, my brother was the first difference, I guess, um, because denial and then acceptance came because my family, like, I think it's family that makes you more accepting because there's hope there's a generation that can can do um different can be different can be better can be healthy can be well and you can't make them you, you can't make them but you have this hope and that hope is what drives you that's what hope is what drives me so um yeah those are the three things that i know that i've gone to so there's differences in that that you can tell me. all right thank you mrs m3 um, all right. So for me, I would say um, I had a loss a couple of years ago. It wasn't somebody dying, um, but it was a big, big loss for me. And the way I was able to cope with it was I went to work. So work is my happy place. That's where I'm able to, you know, be in a positive and happy mindset. Um, I had a, it's interesting because I had a loss. Um, gosh, I think a couple years before that, and I was working at a job and I, um, I, the way I handled it was I isolated myself. I isolated myself. I told the teachers, I didn't want to see any kids today. Um, I, and I told all the teachers why, and I isolated myself in my office and that was a way of coping by isolating. But, um, I don't know, like, I feel like it helped me cope, but not in the best way. Um, but when I went to the district I am now, um, me going to work actually helped me to cope with what had happened. And I was able to deal with it a lot better. So um, work for me is my happy place. And I tell the kids even to this day that this is my happy place. When I'm here, I'm happy. I'm in, in, a, in a good place. So, so yeah, so that's how that, I would say that's a different way that I was able to cope with that. Um, so yeah. So anywho, um, want to shout out, shout out a couple, couple comments, um, that have been coming through. So Mr. Hall of Fame, um, Mr. Hall of Fame. Oh, so WT oh, says, okay. So yeah, we got these jumping back for, okay. So WT Funk says, oh, look up the song Emmett Kai, Emmett Kai video, Jennifer and, and Aniston. I wonder if that's supposed to be Aniston. I'm not sure. 
But it says, it is like a white version of how does it feel from D'Angelo. I remember that video, how does it feel? I remember that. Um, and Mr. Hall of Fame says, hey, sisters, great topic. Shout out to Miss Teddy Penny. Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. And he said, knowledge and relationships. We in here. We in here. And then DJ King says, dang, y'all fine. That's what DJ King says. Dang, y'all fine. Um, WG Funk says, Mr. Hall of Fame 23 kicked in the door, excited, and walked in on a serious moment. Great timing. Great timing. So, and he, Mr. Hall of Fame says, that's what I do. He said, that's what I do. All righty. So thank you for that. Thank you for that. All righty. So we, does anybody have anything else to add? Before we yes. Get My mom wants to know, Tammy, um, are you saying something or someone? For what? The question, I guess, that was just asked. Um, so is there, has there ever been a way, different way to, to, to cope with losing something? Yes, it's it something. Be, it could be it's something, something, yeah. Well, because it could be something or someone, either way. Um, okay, so thank you, Luann. Um, and Mrs. M3, you have something you wanted to say. I wanted to add, yeah, when... The day that I kept getting the text message, you know how people are like texting or calling, texting mm -hmm. calling because something's wrong. Everyone's trying to get a hold of me. The day that my brother um, went unconscious and wasn't being revived and then they put him on life support, I was in class and I tried to hold together. Like I didn't check my messages until lunchtime. Um, I had no idea what was going on. It was the same day that, um, you know, and, and he was in an interesting place. He was like in a public place doing something. And we thought that, that where he was, was doing something wrong to his body. And that's why he was unconscious. And um, I won't disclose because I don't want anyone to be afraid of this particular um, type of thing. But anyways, um, I broke down and cried in front of my fifth period class. And at that time I was going through therapy too. So um, <laughs> relational therapy. And um, I don't usually cry in front of anybody. And I had to email my, my boss like, hey, I need a time off. My fifth period class is worried about me because I'm crying in front of them. I can't hold it together. Like, you know, they just text me like a bunch of people text and, and voicemail that something happened with my brother and they don't know if he's going to make it. And um, my bosses were so understanding. And, you know, I, I left the rest of the day. I came back eventually, of course, to, to class and um, the next, I think, probably a day later or so um and my students are like are you okay like i i am not used to people caring to see me cry so i hadn't cried like it was not my brother was the first time i cried and i think the first time that i ever like allowed my husband to see my to see me like that because i don't usually like growing up you get it together why are you crying something you could fix fine let's fix it I mean, you can't fix, why are you still crying about it? Figure it out. And so that's like mourning and sadness and all that. We don't have time to grieve because we have to take care of business. What's the next thing? With my mom, it was like that. Like I had to do all the the, the paperwork and the, the mortuary, all that stuff. And I didn't get a chance to grieve. And I felt really sad and isolated because a lot of my family members, they hadn't seen her in a year or more. So seeing them, I don't know if they were angry at me, if they were, you know, it wasn't my fault. Y'all could have come to see us, but um, I felt that, you know? And so sometimes in the grieving process, you have to allow other people to feel what they feel, be mad, whatever. And you, just like us crying at the, the broken mug and the, the house shoes and the whatevers, they can be angry at a person. And you, there's nothing you did, but it's their displaced sadness, their grief, their and death the process they have to go through you know there's nothing you can tell them in that moment um that that can change their mind about what they're feeling what they're going through um and I just I remember that and with my brother I was that was the first time I broke down and cried like in public at, of all places but then even you know allowed myself to be vulnerable with with my spouse even over loss of a person so um it looks different. It looks different for everybody. And there's different, even an individual person may mourn differently over someone. When you're thinking of death, someone that dies versus another person that dies, that they were 
close to or not close to. Like it, every person works differently, and even within the person, your grieving cycle is different. So, Thank you, Mrs. M3. Thank you very much. Um, all righty, we're going to go to question number six. Um, we're going to go ahead and allow it to pop up as I'm wiggling my fingers. Wiggling and wiggling and wiggling and okay, there it goes. Okay, so um, and also we want to work welcome Queen Dom to the panel. Dom, it is so nice to see you. How are you? Hi. Hi. I'm, gonna cut, I'm gonna cut my camera off, but I've been at work. So if you call my name and I don't answer right away, just skip me. <laughs> no no problem, here. no problem. Um, thank you for coming. Um, so I actually when I sent this question in, I actually didn't finish sending it in, so I'll finish what it's supposed to say. So it says, when grief comes over a person, it is good to have a trusted friend or responsible adult acquaintance to confide in or talk to. So is there somebody that you choose to talk to or confide in when you're going through those unfortunate things? So we'll start with Lou Ann, then we'll go to Queen Chris and Mrs. M3, and then Queen Dom. All righty, Lou Ann, so who would you who is a trusted friend or adult that you would go to if you were going through those kind of things? Um, um, I believe uh, so. Are you asking who who I who I would call? Yeah, who would you call or who would you go to um, that you would say is a trusted friend or responsible adult when you're going through those hard times? Uh, there's a few people. Um, there's a few people because, you know, when 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 um, especially when I'm feeling bad, you know, I would call most 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 of my friends. You know, you unfortunately, um, but uh, my mom, my mom is uh, someone that I would I would call as well as my sister. Um, so you three people I would call because. At the end of the day, I know you guys would give me um, the perspective that I need um, to be able to um, cope with something so big. All right. Okay. Thank you for that, um, Lou Ann. I uh, want to shout out DJ Eddie King. He says, hello, ladies. So DJ King, Eddie King is tuning in. And also, okay, let me see if I can say this correctly. Swag Rascal 2. Swag. Uh, oh, Swag Rascal 2. I think, uh, yeah, Swag Rascal 2. Thank you, um, Mrs. M3. Swag Rascal 2 is tuning in. Thank you for tuning in. It says, oh, hold on, what did it say? I didn't get to see what it said. Maybe it'll pop back. There it goes. Okay, it says, I hope you queens have had a wonderful day. Thank you for tuning in. Please make sure you hit the like button and feel free to share this video. All righty, so thank you. All righty, so I think I said Queen was next. Thank you, Mrs. M3. And then Queen Dom. Okay, so Queen, is, who is somebody that you would go through when you're or talk to a friend or trusted friend or adult when you're going through those times? Um, usually it was, I was always um, babysitting for some family. <laughs> So I became like the older daughter. So I would always be talking to them um, because, you know, I'm not good at hiding how I feel. I wear it all over my face. Um, and it's usually um, if I'm on the phone with a, one of my sisters and I'm short, like I get really short with them, they'll they'll call each other and say, hey, something going on with her. <laughs> So they usually tag team and, you know, what's going on with you? You too far away to be acting like that. We can't get to you, you know. So it's usually, um, it's usually my older sister. Um, yeah, the oldest one, the second child. Yeah, so she's normally like, and then my my third, the third child, which is my older sister, I nicknamed her Sissy Ma. Mm -hmm. So she became like my mom when my mom passed away to me. So, yeah, it's usually my my sisters or, you know, friends or 
you know, more so like a family, like an older woman out here who has kids and like, you know, so yeah, so that's who I run to. And nice. I usually talk to my, you know, my husband when I, you know, <laughs> when I'm in my right state of mind, because he can't always handle it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nice. Thank you, Queen. Thank you very much. Um, all righty, Chris. Who is somebody that you who is a trusted friend or adult that you would go to when you are going through those difficult, difficult times? Yeah, it'd probably be my my siblings. My siblings. I have two older brothers and two older sisters. And so typically I go to the oldest first. So my oldest brother, my oldest sister. Um, and then I go to the the younger not younger than I am, but the the younger ones, I guess. Um I think I, my oldest brother and oldest sister, they watched me a lot when I was a, um, when I was young, when I was a baby. Um, and then as I got older into elementary school, and so I think I kind of see them as my second parents in a way. And so I, I, I typically go to them if I need like emotional support. Um, and uh, they're just really helpful. They're really wise for, for their age, I guess. And they know how to get people through things. Um, and so I think I typically go to them and they can handle it as well. Like I know that going to them wouldn't be a burden on them. So like that anxiety goes away. Um, and so, yeah, those are my, my, my people, I guess. Alrighty, thank you, Chris. Um, what about you, Mrs. M3? Who would you go to? Oh my goodness. My brother used to be my rock, all of our rock, you know, so he was the one that I went to the most when I um, needed to talk to somebody about stuff. Just this past week, I was thinking about um, facials and all these things about like cleansers and scrubs and, and something else. I forgot what it is. Uh, some kind of peel, some kind of chemical peel. And I was like, man, did my mom ever do facials? I don't remember my mom ever doing facials, but I remember she was a model when you know she was younger, but not like remember it, but I remember the stories of my family and you know, my older siblings talking about it and her talking about it and meeting her old boss. Um, but I don't remember her talking about that. And the, the thing about it is I'm like, I wish I had somebody to talk to. And then it dawned on me, her best friends, right? They always text me here random times. Um, and one of them, she's in New Orleans now. And the other one is over here uh, in the East Bay. And I'm like, I never asked this question or got a chance to ask this question to my mom because I didn't worry about my skin, you know, my, you know, the time that she was alive. But now that I'm getting older, like, do you know anything about these products? And I just started listing them off and they started sending me <laughs> information. They're like, you know what? We miss your mom too. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, like that's a question I would have asked my mom, but her besties are like still in my life. And I, and to this day, ask them things like that. Um, and of course my own besties, um, you know, my, and my, my nieces are my besties. I, I better say that in public right now. Um, <laughs> and we spend time, we take our, we take our, our month, uh, uh, our day a month and we hang out, you know, random do stuff on purpose together. And we're like, you know, we miss each other. We need to hang out. Okay. Let's hang out, um, individually or together, however it works. And then of course my own besties that I see like week in and week out, um, or talk to, or am able to, you know, contact by phone or, or um, text message. They know when my text messages are long. Yeah. That's because she, she's feeling a lot right now. Let's see what's happening. Uh, so Mrs. M3. So um, yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like I have a lot of support when I tap into it. There are times where I can be really in myself and really um, afraid to reach out, you know. Um, and, and my family can get the same way too. You know, they'll every once in a while, yeah, I didn't call because I didn't really want to hear this. You know, I've been going through it for a while and I know I talked to you last week or this week and I didn't want to bring it up again. Like, no, like call, let's talk, you know. Uh, my brother, my little brother's going through it right now. And it was so crazy. He pocket dialed me this morning at 6 a.m. And like, I texted him, little bro, are you okay? Because I just got a text message. I'm not going to tell you, or not a text, but a, a video, a voice uh, message. I'm like, I'm not going to tell the crowd what was that voice message because it was conversation. Um, I'm sure he didn't call me on purpose for that conversation. <laughs> you know, it's like, you okay? And he just like, you know, opened up and he was like, no, actually this and this and this is happening with me. I'm good, but you know, um, me and my friends are feeling it, you know, um, uh, and I was like, man, and I, I invited them to see tonight because they're going through grief right now over a loss of one of their friends and, um, just random things like that. Like the spirit just like, 
you need to talk to your older sister, you know, my dad's side. And we didn't grow up together. Um, we actually met um, in the latter part of my dad's life. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just, it's good connections like that. That's just, you know, God even puts us in people's lives at, at random moments. And I had just talked to him a month ago. So I'm like, how in the world did you pocket dial me? We just talked like last month. But I don't know. It was, it had to be totally God, but um, I hope that he's all right. And, you know, I like spending time with my little brother too. So. Nice. Thanks for sharing that, Mrs. M3. Um, all righty, Queen Dom, is there somebody that you go to, a trusted friend or adult, when you're going through those hard times, when you're doing some, dealing with something that's really serious, who is a trusted friend or adult that you would go to, talk to, call, actually see in person, who would that be for you? Um, <laughs> I would say, well, the first person would probably be um, Ali. Uh, because we talk five times a day. So I have no choice but to run to him. We literally like talk five times a day. Um, so I wouldn't have any choice but to run to him. Um, the second one would be my brother because we live together. And, um, you know, we grew up together. Like my mom worked a lot. Like, we, you know, I'm cooked for him, cleaned for him. You know, I call him my son. The emoji next to his name is like the woman holding the baby. <laughs> so like, um, yeah, he would be next. And then my uncle would be last Hi. only because Hi. he's all the way in New York, but like he's one of those people too. Like if he was around me, he would be, sorry guys, he would be the first person that um, I go to just because, I mean, the men in my family, like they're, they're you know, they're my rock. They kind of like hold me together and I'm a big brat. So when you go to the guys, like it's just, they know how to console me and be there for me and like tell me like, you know, we got you, don't worry. So yeah, I would say uh, Ali, my brother, and my uncle. Yeah, those would be like top three, all in the same or like level. Nice, That's nice. It. Thank you, Queen Dom. Um, all right. So for me, um, I would say um, so. I have people that I call my safe space, which are people that I can know I can go to about things. Uh, but I also think that whoever your safe space is, which is I think is like the people that you guys are naming. Like it's always good to reevaluate because sometimes people don't stay as your safe space because may, new people may enter your life that you can get a lot closer to and then you can become distant with. So you always, I say to always have, always reevaluate because there may be somebody else that you feel more comfortable going to rather than somebody else. So I always think that's a good idea. But yeah, I do have um, certain people that I'd say are in my safe space that I know I can go to. Um, whenever I'm going to, and I have, so, um, and I know that, you know, the ones that I've gone to, I'm able to talk to them and, you know, and feel a lot better. So, um, so yeah, they help me come back to where I need to be. So, um, so yeah, so anywho, um, all righty, nice, nice, nice. So that is that for that question. Does anybody have anything else they would like to add before we move on to question number seven? Yes. No. I, was, I was gonna say I also believe in calling like you know the one eight hundred numbers you know especially for depression because you know when uh when my mom passed like sometimes I didn't want to talk I didn't want to talk to anyone who knew me I wanted to talk to a complete stranger who's just there to listen with no no input no feedback no judgment just support so you know we had those numbers on pocket dial <laughs> nice nice thank you queen. thank you queen yeah I, I never even thought about that but yeah that actually is a really good idea about those numbers because you know those those people are there for to listen so and sometimes when you're going through that stuff that's all you need is for somebody to listen that's all you need and sometimes that can be enough so um thank you for that queen um, all right, so we're going to go on to question number seven. So question number seven, seven. Let's see if it's going to reveal itself. Question number, there we go. See, see magic in the fingertips. All righty, so question number seven says, as an adult or even a parent, do you think you have to control your grief to appear strong for others? 
Um, so yeah, this is a good, good question. So we're gonna start with Queen first. We're gonna go to Queen Dom, Blue Ann, Mrs. M3, and then Chris. All righty, Queen, what do you think about this question? What is your response to this question? Um, I don't, I don't think so. I think, um, I think it's appearing strong is, is, is false because you're not strong right now. You're, you're actually weak, you know? Um, I, I've seen my mom, you know, I remember going when I was in high school going to, I didn't want to go. Um, but we went to her brother's funeral and I remember, um, her breaking down and crying and, you know, um, kind of everyone was like dealing with their own thing. And so I was kind of like, I was her mini me. So I was like sitting at the piano with her while she played and cried and I was singing with her and, you know, and I went and laid in the bed with her and we cuddled and she went to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my dad, my dad slept in the other room and I slept with my mom, you know? So, yeah. So I don't, I don't think you have to appear strong. I think showing and teaching kids how to grieve is very important. And knowing that it's, it's a natural emotion or feeling like if you're crying, you're sad, you know, I always think about good times and the, when um, James died, and how the kids were like, why is not mom crying? Why is not mom crying? You know, what's wrong with her? What's wrong with her? And then she kind of just broke down and it was like she wanted to be strong for everyone. But it ended up being too much for her at the end when she could have just allowed her kids to comfort her. So, yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Queen. Um, all righty. Queen Dom. Hey. Yeah. So do you think so as an adult or even a parent, do you think that you have to control your grief to appear strong for others? Um, I don't think you. OK, so I don't think you have to appear strong, but um, I will say, like, I have little siblings. So, like, you know, God forbid, if anything was ever to happen to someone really close to us, um, we're talking about I have a six year old little brother. Um, you know, I would. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't wouldn't let myself break down in front of them because in order for me to explain to them like this is what's going on, this is what hap what's happening, I can't be like <laughs> you know, like I gotta kind of like you know, like get it together for two seconds so I can kind of explain like and let them cry and be there for them and you know and then I can go with my brother and we can cry on our own and my older brother, you know, we can cry on our own or with my mom or whatever. But um, yeah, when it comes to like my little siblings and things like that, um. I definitely would hold back just a little bit so I have enough, like, you know, power to, like, explain to them and, like, be there for them and, like, you know, because I don't live with them. So when I'm on my own, I can break down and go to someone else and go to another adult or anything like that. Um, so, yeah, for kids, yeah, I would say, yeah, for my uncle, when my aunt passed away, that's, like, my mom, you know, so it hurt me. But that's also his sister, and it's, like, his mom died. Everyone died for him. So it's kind of, like, I had to, you know. Like, I just not had to, but I just felt like, you know, I wanted to do that for him. Like, I wanted to, you know, like, talk to him, like, be able to, like, let him cry on my shoulder because he needed me more than I, at that moment, than I needed him. So, yeah, I think that, appear, or like, not appearing strong, but, like, you know, not, like, you know, totally breaking down maybe because in that moment that person needs you more than you need them. So, yeah, I think that that's, yeah. So, I'm not yes to the question, but yes to the question, I guess. <laughs> Yeah. No, thank you, Queen Dom. Thank you very much for that. Um, all righty. So, Luann Love, as an adult or a parent, do you think you have to control your grief to appear strong for others? What do you think? Um, no. Um, because then you're not. Um, <clears throat> because then you're not letting your real emotions out. You're holding those in. And then that can also be damaging to you. Uh, so you kind of want to not hold back. If you, I can see, you know, if you have a whole lot of company or whatever, and you just don't want to be all emotional in front of them and you wait <clears throat> till they leave. But I just feel like um, uh, 
um, no, even even with your children, I feel like you need to teach them that it's okay. It's okay to have these feelings, but then how can we get out of it? Um, I do have a family member that they, to this day, still grieve um, um, their father. You know, um, it was two and a half years ago, but it's like every day to them. And because they were a child, they don't know how to deal with that. So um, their mother then has to, you know, show her it's okay for you to cry. It's okay for you to grieve your father. I don't know what you are feeling, but mama's here for you. So they cry together. You know, they, they'll they read together. Whatever to make her feel better, the mother is there. And so I feel like um, in, in that instance, if it's a child, Yes, you should kind of, you know, um, teach them how to express their feelings and then be able to express how they're feeling. Um, but you shouldn't um, hold back your feelings either because then it's a learned behavior. They'll, know, they'll learn how to um, control their emotions by watching you. All right. Thank you, Luann. Thank you for that. Um, we're going to go to... Mrs. M3, what are your thoughts? Um, you know, as an adult and through therapy and things, I am learning to retrain my thinking from the be strong for the sake of others training that I received growing up in my formative years um, because I find that there's strength in our weakness. I find that when I let down, other people let down. And it's okay to grieve together. It's okay. Even if your grief is different than mine, me sharing with you vulnerably what I'm going through allows you to share vulnerably with no judgment. Like there's no judgment zone. Um, whereas, you know, be strong for the sake of others. They see you strong. They're like, oh, well, when I'm around this person, I got to be strong. Like they can't see me cry. My mom, I never saw her like shed tears. I remember a moment when a long time ago, she would, she would say, you know, I stopped crying at 17 when my father died and I can't get tears to come out of my eyes anymore. And she was like, seriously, like sad, sad things would happen. And she could, you see that she, her countenance is sad, but she couldn't cry. She wouldn't let herself cry. And I probably, we were seven years old, married Mario, Mario and I, and I was like finally able to be vulnerable and let him see me cry. Like I remember roommates that were like, cause she, your mom, has, you should be crying. This happened. You should be crying. I'm like, I cry. I just don't let you guys see me cry because I don't feel like you would comfort me or I don't expect you to. Like there's, you know, the conversations were there, but the tears had already been shed in my car before I got home for dinner or whatever, you know. Um, but I've, I've learned as an adult um, that being strong for the sake of others is not really necessarily what people need. Um, they need the vulnerability. They need that space, that, that mental health break where whether it's tears or remembering a funny thing about somebody, remembering, you know, their humor and, and laughing together and just honoring that space, you know, that's what people heal. That's how people heal, you know, but being fake strong doesn't help anybody. And if you need help, you know, mental health break from, from stuff, take it, you know, you might feel that you're being aggressive towards them or mean or something, but that's not the case. You just have to know how, you know, what helps for you and just, you know, people are going to either honor that or they won't. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. M3. Um, all righty, Chris, what are your thoughts on question number seven? Um, I don't think you have to, but I think um, something happens in your brain and it just triggers this need to be the strongest person in that moment. I remember uh, when my grandma passed away, my mom called me first. And then so I had to call my siblings. And I remember just like sitting on the phone with them and telling them that it was okay. Even though that like the entire hour before I called them, I had broken down. But when I was on the phone with them, for some reason I couldn't cry with them. I just comforted them as if I was okay. And I didn't, I wasn't telling myself, oh, you're fine. Just pretend to be fine. It just, something just kicked in. And same with my older brother, when he came to my house, he also didn't know yet. So I had to tell him and I comforted him um, as if I was fine already. And it was just really interesting seeing how that works. Um, 
And then also I, I listen to uh, Jordan Peterson often and he um, got a question from a young man who had lost his father, I believe. And the funeral was coming up and he said, Jordan Peterson, I need help. Um, how do I get through this funeral? I don't know what to do. And Jordan Peterson said, be the strongest man in the room. And the young man thanked him because he was able to, he felt like he had a purpose at his dad's funeral. He felt like he was able to be the rock at his dad's funeral. Um, and I find that to be really interesting, like feeling like you're able to carry yourself through by carrying others through with you um, and the power in that. And so I, I found that to be really interesting that it just kind of is like this trigger in our brain. Where we're like, OK, this person needs me more than I need them. So let me be, be there for them. Um, it's like an extreme sense of empathy. Like you understand them so much that you know, OK, they're, I know exactly how they feel. I know exactly how to be there for them. This is what I wish I had had when I found out. Um, and so, yeah, I think to an extent you don't have to, but I think something triggers in your brain that that kind of forces you to, and it, it doesn't feel bad. Typically it feels pretty good to be there for people you love. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for that. Um, all right, so for question number seven, um, I don't know. Like, I mean, I kind of think that you, like, I kind of feel like people feel like they need to be strong because they have to keep going. So in their mind, you know, showing that is showing weakness and making yourself vulnerable, allowing yourself to be vulnerable is not actually a weakness. It's actually a strength. So, um, so yeah, so we're going to, um, so I think that, um, I don't know, it's kind of hard because as a parent, I would say, you know, I have my daughter and if I'm going through something, I don't, I want her to see me cry, but I don't want to continue to cry. So I want her to be able to see me crying, but then also being able to handle whatever it is that I have to do in our life. So I think as a parent, um, yeah, you want your kids to see that you show those emotions, but you also want your kids to see that you don't allow those emotions to overtake you so much that you aren't able to, you know, keep going with your life that you need to because, you know, the reality is that your life does not stop when something happens. Your life does keep going. So you do have to continue to do things. So as a parent, even though you want your child to see you, that you have those emotions, that it's okay to have those, you still want your child to see that even though you have those emotions, you can be strong enough to have those emotions and still strong enough to keep going. So I would say that would be my response to that. Um, I feel like with other people, if I'm not speaking from a parent perspective, with friends, I feel like you don't, your friends don't need to see you see you being strong because they what you're going through is something that can be hard to deal with. So I feel like you trying to show that you're strong, you're not being honest with yourself that at this particular moment, it's okay to be grieving. It's okay to cry. It's okay to show those emotions. So, um, so yeah, so, you know, people like, you know, the adults that are around you, they know that you're going through something like this. And I feel like they, they want to see you feel like it's okay to not be okay at that moment. So I feel like with them, it's okay to do that. Um, so Larry Howard is uh, tuning in. We want to shout him out. He says, what's up, ladies? Um, he also says, he says, that's correct. He just had the funeral for his mom. So I'm um, sorry to hear that. Condolences to that. I know you're really close to your mom. Um, he says, I did not see her for seven years because he had a nervous breakdown because he was the rock in his household. So, yeah, when you are the rock, um, you know, and things are going a certain kind of way, it can cause you to, you know, have that uh, that moment, that nervous breakdown, um, because being the rock is, is hard. And sometimes that's hard for just one person to handle. Um, so, yeah. So, um, yeah, condolences to you and sorry to hear about your mom passing. Um, hopefully, you know, you're doing okay. So, um, all righty. So we are going to move on to our next question. Does anybody have anything else they want to add before we move on to our next question? Our next question, question number eight, I think it is. Yeah, I think we're on question number eight. All righty. We're going to go ahead and pull up question number eight. 
There it goes. So it says, what was an unconventional way you grieved a loss and why? Um, so I think we kind of answered this actually earlier. I think we answered this with question, um, what, oh, question number five, where it says, have there ever been a time that you found a different way to cope with losing something? So I think we actually kind of answered this question. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and go to question number nine. We're gonna go ahead and go to the next question. Um, so question number nine. Let's pull it up. That's fine. You want to see question number nine. There we go. So it says, and this is our final question, you guys. It says, is it possible to prepare for loss to make the grieving process easier? Are you ever really prepared? So this is going to be an interesting question. We're going to start with Chris. Then we're going to go to Luann, Mrs. M3, Queen, and then Queen Dom. All righty, Chris, what do you say about this question? I think um, when you know, you, you have a feeling that someone's gonna pass, it's easier than when you lose them tragically, um, unexpectedly. And part of that I think helps the, the grieving process kind of move along faster. You kind of get to the to the point where you're, you, you, you've accepted it faster. Um, but I think when it's tragic, there's really no way to prepare yourself. Like, I think it's really hard to just constantly sit around and think, okay, well, people can leave at any moment and just like constantly living in that, that fear sort of, or trying to, um, preparing for worst case scenario all the time can be very exhausting. And so I think there are certain times where it, you can do it. It is possible to prepare, but typically it's because that person is um, sick or, they're older. Um, yeah, I think, I don't think you're ever really prepared, though. Once it hits you, I think it's still a feeling that you you can't really describe. Um, so you know it's coming. So it's not like a, it's not like hitting a wall. But I think that when it does come, you don't know how exactly you're going to want to handle it, how you're going to feel, how you're going to get through it. Um, so that part, I think, is still unpredictable. But I think to an extent, yes, it is possible to prepare um, or at least kind of move through the, the process stages a bit um, smoother. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much for that. All righty. So, Luann Love, what are your thoughts? Do you think that it is possible to prepare for, um, prepare for the grieving process, prepare to make the grieving process easier? And are you ever really prepared? Um, I have a two part question to this. I mean, two part answer. Um, <clears throat> I am a uh, RN slash PCA um, caregiver. Um, and for my clients, um, it has become kind of scary because sometimes I can just, you know, know their condition. I can um, know their illnesses and I can um, kind of almost, you know, uh, Dom and Miss um, Queen might know. You can kind of almost know when it's about to happen. So I mentally prepare myself already to be strong for the family. Um, I do that even if I'm close to the client. I do that, and I am extremely close to all my clients, so I take it very personal. And so um, the very first two that passed on me, was the, the, it was the hardest um, because I, I never experienced it, like, firsthand. Um, I thought that it gets easier, but it does not. It does not get easier. Is, is I know it may not be like a friend or a family member, but it's someone that you're close to. It's someone that you're touching every day, you're taking care of every day. And so when you see them going through the, the life stages, it can be, it is beautiful, but it is also so painful for the family. So to me, it's like, um, it's, it's, kind of hard to say because when you look at this person you know that they are ready to go <clears throat> so how can you grieve uh, 
for them. You, sh- you want to be happy for them, a happy grief, like a happy cry, I guess, for them because they're telling you, I, I want to go. Like, I'm about to take my last breath. Like, some of these people actually know. And so I think it's for the family that you have to be strong for or that I have to be strong for because they don't know. They don't know the process. They don't understand. I put myself in that in the um, in the family shoes um, with answering these questions because I understand what the family is going through, but I also understand what my patient is going, my client, my resident. I understand what they're going through, and so um, I don't think anyone could be fully prepared, but I think emotionally and mentally you can kind of get yourself prepared when working in that situation to help the family uh, cope with what's going on. Thank you. Thank you, Luann. Um, Thank you for sharing that. Um, So Larry Howard has some more comments. So he says, there we go. He says, oh, okay. So we read the one that he didn't see his mom for seven years. And he said no in response to the question. He also says his mom told him that she was going to die and told him not to tell anyone. It was tearing him up inside, and he acted out of character because of it. He also says, I'm okay now. I have to be. I'm now the leader of my family, game face on. So, um, so yeah, you know, when you got to be there, you got to be there. You got to put the game face on. Um, All right, so this is M3. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts about if it's possible to prepare for loss to make the grieving process easier? And are you ever really prepared? Um, separate from grieving process, separating the grieving process from being prepared. Have your plan. If you want to be cremated, tell your family that. If you want to be buried, tell your family that. If you want to be in a mausoleum, tell your family that. All that is separate from your grieving process. The grieving process, it's going to hit you at odd times, again, it can happen 30 years from the time, you know, that that the loss uh, occurs. Um, someone mentioned earlier the loss of, you know, the, the divorce, that's the loss of a title. You're no longer a, a, a wife or a spouse. Empty nesters go through the grief of, you know, their kids are no longer in the, in the house. So now the title of mom and dad, it takes on a different definition, right? Um, it's not an everyday thing. So. Grief and loss can hit you at different times. And so just knowing, being aware is part of preparation, but you can't really prepare for a loss that you don't know is coming, right? Um, Or even if you do know it's coming, you can prepare your mind that it's going to happen, but you don't know how you're going to respond to it. You know, the kid goes away to college. You don't know how you're going to react to that. You just know it's going to happen. It's in the future somewhere, or maybe they'll be home for school. You don't ever know. Um, I just... My Wonder Woman bands, I would call them um, being strong for the kids, right? This, this right here, my fifth period student in 2018, when I was crying of a storm, he took it and he, from his seat, and I didn't, he wasn't in trouble for it, he did this and landed it to my desk. As I was crying and trying to figure out, you know, how I'm going to tell my bosses I can't stay today. Um, and it's basically, um, you see it, it's a scripture in symbols. You see the heart, the vision, the cross, and the, it's the question, what can separate us from Christ's love? And the first thing my nephew said when I said, I'm an orphan now, like when my, when my pop passed away, there have no one on earth that calls me daughter. Um, he said, God will always call you daughter. And then this kid, you know, my student did this and I was like, wow, you know, um, simple things like that. Like it just touches your heart and you're going through the grief, but it kind of softens the heartbreak. Um, and I always, you know, whenever someone calls and says, you know, I have a loss, this happened, you know, I'm sorry this happened to you, you know, my condolences and I, I, I pray for you for your heartbreak. God heals your heart, you know, um, because that's what it is. As Luen was saying, that's love that you don't know what to do with anymore. Um, that person's gone and you know depending on your faith you know that person may be their essence on earth is gone but you know you'll see them again someday in in their different form um that's what i think thank you mrs m3 
All righty, Queen 2K21, what are your thoughts on the last question? Um, I don't think you can prepare for anything, even if you know it's coming. Um, I'm going to speak on me, you know, when my mom was dying, I planned on I had to finish uh, to go to summer school so I could graduate with my AA to transfer to the four-year school. So um, my teachers were letting me take all my exams and stuff early. And uh, I think it was a week before I was supposed to get on a plane and stay out there for three months. She died. So even though we knew she was dying, it was I wasn't I couldn't prepare for that. There's no way in the world um, you can get the preparations in order um, like we did her will and all that stuff. But there was no way, no way I I was prepared for that. Um, so even, even my aunt, who was the most recent deaf I've had, um, who was my mom's last sibling, who I'm named after, when she died, I wasn't prepared for that. Well, actually, no, that's not true. For her, I was prepared. So I think it, it's it's both. Um, I had a situation where her daughter um, kind of put her in um, a home and wouldn't tell me where she was. So I couldn't see her. And I don't know if she did it out of jealousy of me and her um, connection um, cause I was very close to my aunt. Um, that's the reason why I came to California. Um, so I, I had prepared that she was dying even though she was still alive. So yeah, so, so you're right. Yeah, you can, you can, but it still hit me hard. It still hit me hard. It still was traumatic, but, um, Yeah. So I think I think it just depends. Depends on the person, depends on yeah, so I contradicted myself. So yeah, I think you can prepare. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I had um, an epiphany as I was speaking. Yeah. Self awareness. <laughs> yeah, no, you're good. You're good. Um, Queen Dom, what are your thoughts on the last question? Is it possible to prepare? For loss to make the grieving process easier and are you ever really prepared um i would say i agree with um queen and definitely with luann um i think it, yeah it depends it, as queen just said i think it depends on the person like if if it's your you know your grandmother who raised you and you know it's like you're rocking you feel like you can't live without her i don't think you can ever really prepare for that you know but if it's like I don't know, maybe, you know, a, a coworker who got sick and maybe, you know, you started seeing them in the hospital and things like that, but you guys, you know, that that's not like your, I don't know, like it's like your grandmother. So I think it depends on, yeah, who the person is. Like you, you can prepare and I mean, it's still going to always be like sad, I guess, depending on how you handle grief. Um, for me, I can kind of separate cer certain things, but like, like with Queen and um, Luann, when it comes to my clients, like ugh, even if they're not like my everyday clients, I, it, it's it's still hard. It's it's still hard, mm -hmm. but not as hard. Right. Yeah. That's Thank, what you. Say. And, uh, Thank you. Thank um, you. So yeah. So I do agree as far as you can't necessarily really be prepared. I mean, you can prepare for loss as far as like people saying, you know, the will and things like that. Um, I also feel like, you know, um, not allowing there to be regrets is a way that you can prepare, you know, that's why you have, it with, oh, I wish I would have said this, I wish I would have done that. You know, when that, when, you know, when that person passes, you're not able to fix those things. So I definitely think that that's the way that you can prepare. Um, but I feel like even if you know, as far as, you know, you find out from the doctor, this person has a week to live or something like that, even if you know that, I don't, I still don't think you can really be prepared when it actually happens. So even if you know the timeline, doesn't necessarily mean that she'll be more prepared for when it actually happens. Because um, I still feel like it can still hit you really, really hard. So, um, so yeah, I feel like you can prepare as far as 
certain things, but I fit prepare. I feel like in other ways you can't because it's just, I feel like you're never really ready when that happened. You're never really ready. So, um, so the best thing to do is to, um, you know, not have those regrets that you have that you'd be saying at the end. Um, but yeah, as far as being prepared, um, you know, yeah. So anywho, that's my feedback on that question. And that is our last question. We have come to the end of our lovely, lovely lady stream once again. Um, so we're going to have everybody shout out their social media, and then we are going to go ahead and close it out. So we're going to start with Lou Ann Love. Okay, um, I'm Luann Love. Um, I'm here on Saturdays for the ladies' night, as well as sometimes on the knowledge and relationships on Thursdays, Thursday nights. Um, you can find me on Facebook at um, Luann Love. Also, you can find me on Instagram, Ladybug51. Thank you, Lou Ann. Um, next, we're going to go to Queen. Queen 2K21. What's up, y'all? Um, you can find me on Instagram at Queen Forever 2K21. I'm on the Knowledge and Relationships platform. I pop in, I pop out, I get my two cents, and I keep it pushing. <laughs> and yeah, just follow me, see what you can catch, and keep it moving. <laughs> Thank you, Queen 2K21. All righty, next we have Queen Dom. Hi. Oh, <laughs> I forgot for a second what we were doing. Hi, um, you can find me on Instagram at the Queen underscore Dom. You can find me on Facebook and you can find me here at Knowledge and Relationships as the Assistant Network Manager, and you can find me on the Lady Night stream. So, bye. Thank you, Queen Dom. All right, next we have Chris. Hello, I am Chris the Blooming Ebony. You can find me here on YouTube at the Blooming Ebony, on Instagram at the Blooming Ebony. I talk about femininity, growth, accountability, all the good stuff, and I would love it if you can come by and subscribe, comment, and like to my content. Um, and also, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe here at Knowledge Relationships. Thank you, Chris. All righty, then we have Mrs. M3. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in today um, and all three of the days Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, 5 30, right here. You'll find me Knowledge and Relationships every Saturday. We appreciate your comments. Thank you so much for coming. Have a good night. All righty. And by the way, Chris, I'm loving the hair, by the way. Just wanted to say that. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So then we have me. Me, me, me. All righty. So I am your host. I'm First Lady Tammy. Thank you for tuning in once again to an amazing stream of Ladies Night, where you get the woman's insight, the woman's perspective. Make sure you come back again next Saturday for another great topic or feel free to come back on Monday or Thursday or any other day that this beautiful and lovely YouTube channel is having something amazing as they always do. So make sure that, like Chris said, you like this video, if you share it and also subscribe to Knowledge and Relationships so you can catch all of the amazing things that we do. Um, I am the host for Saturday's Ladies Night, so you see me on Saturdays. I might be the host, but I might have a co-host. You never know, but you got to keep coming back to find out. I am also on Mondays and Thursdays on those amazing topics, and I have an Instagram, First Lady Tammy 916 so you can catch me there. You can catch me here doing my thing. All right, and on that note, we are going to leave you for now, but we'll be back next Saturday with another amazing topic. Bye. Night, everyone.